I think one of the worst parts of it was when we were actually driving the boat to the ship. And I have my feet, like, you know, on both sides of the boat trying to keep it balanced. This was the scariest thing in the universe because we are watching the motorcycle hang over the ocean yeah. by what looks like a thread, this tiny rope. and they hoisted the motorcycle yeah. up to bring it onto the deck of the boat. Dale. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Two Up and Overloaded. I'm Tim Notier. And I'm Marissa Notier. And we've been riding all over the world on our KTM 1190 motorcycle. We ride two up, so I'm on the back. And it has been three continents so far. But in this episode, we are flashing back to the past, to the last episode of our Central America season. This is true, and if you want to ride along in further detail and kind of do a little visual joyride of our YouTube versus uh, in word in print. It's all two up and overload. It's where the name came from. That's right. It's where the and then fun little. This is where our logo came from. It's from blood, sweat, no tears. And we've merged these two books into the powerhouse that is two up and overloaded. So check it out on Amazon worldwide. You can get it in Kindle. You can get it in paperback. Yeah, this is the finale of the the book uh, Two Up and Overloaded um, where we are now in Panama and we're trying to bridge the gap that is the Darien Gap and how to get around it. Yes, that is right because the Darien Gap is a big obstacle. It is a roadless section between Central America and South America that you just cannot pass with a motorcycle or any vehicle for that matter. Yeah. Some people have but there's no yeah there's no road so you either have to fly the motorcycle ship it on a container ship or like we did <laughs> put it on a sailboat yes. <laughs> so we were in costa rica heading towards panama we knew this was going to be the last country of central america <laughs> he's he's dead. pretending to be dead but he's not dead you know you're not dead <laughs> <laughs> So as we headed into Panama from Costa Rica, we decided that we were going to go straight into the mountains. So we went to the town of Boquete. And in Boquete, the clouds became thick and gloomy and the mists were hanging low. And it was just a really different atmosphere from that bright sunny beach that you often think of when you think of Panama. did really love the mountains, but our minds were basically just focused on how are we going to cross the Darien Gap, yeah. and we weren't enjoying ourselves to the fullest because we were so focused on this task at yeah. hand. Yeah, it was more of a business trip, right? Yeah. Like, you know, there's a lot of logistics, and this is the first time where we had to be somewhere by a particular time that yeah. cost a, a large sum of money, so I just wanted to make sure that we got all of our priorities straight. Absolutely. But before we were going to just do all business, we wanted to have at least one day at the beach. Yeah. So we headed to Las Lajas. And 
that is a beautiful beach right on the Pacific coast. Yeah. Unfortunately, the day that we went, it was still a little bit rainy and gloomy out. We didn't even go swimming because... It, we waited. We waited in, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> But from there, we headed straight to the capital of Panama, which is Panama City. As we made our way to Panama City, we crossed what Panama is most famous for, and that is the Panama Canal. Yeah. And it's the first time we saw skyscrapers since. Yeah. California. I mean, I'm sure there's there's skyscrapers in Mexico City and stuff, but we avoid most large cities, um, and so this was a shock and awe. I know. I couldn't believe it. It was really, really beautiful there. Unfortunately, the Airbnb that we got in Panama was City was disgusting. That was super, super duper, <laughs> duper, duper gross, folks. Yeah, there was some woman that had a room in her house listed on Airbnb, Rosie. But that woman sadly had taken off and left her her 19 year old son in charge. <laughs> and just, I, do I need to tell you more? It was just, just, a, it just everything had a, an inch thick of. Grease. Just grease on everything. It was Ugh. it was not pleasant. It was quite no. disgusting. He left all the sheets just like in a bundled pile, yeah. dirty, right on the bed. He was quite high. Yeah, he was very like, high. Uh, he was very <laughs> chipper, but he's a very chipper bad host. <laughs> yes, not the best yeah. Airbnb host. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it was time for us to meet up with the sailboat that we were going to be taking for five days to cross the ocean dun, 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 to Colombia. Super, super excited. Yes. up with the captain Debbie and her husband Wayne mm -hmm. in Puerto Lindo which was past Colon on the Atlantic side of Panama. Port, beautiful port. <laughs> yeah Puerto Lindo does mean beautiful port. Yeah and it was all right at best. <laughs> Just to be clear. Just to get a little anxious. It was okay. It was okay. <laughs> and we met the, their, their ship hand. I don't know quite what to call Thomas. Um, deck hand. 
the first mate. First mate, <laughs> Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. So we were quite concerned of how we were going to get the motorcycle onto the ship because the ship cannot dock close to shore. It has to be far away. So we had to actually put the motorcycle on a tiny fiberglass, fiberglass boat. Lancha. Yeah. yeah, it's called a lancha that would ferry us to the ship itself. And we quite literally had to manhandle my bike to get it on this little fiberglass. It was like three canoes wide by like a canoe and a half length. Yeah. And I know canoes come in different sizes too. But <laughs> that's my. I think that's, that's even stretching official. it. I think it was smaller than yeah. that. It was like four strong men and then me and Marissa translating what they're what they're saying so I can try to be helpful. I now on reflection though, if that if I was just removed from the situation, <laughs> it probably would have gone a lot smoother. But if there was anything I could do to help assist not having my motorcycle fall into the ocean, I was going to be Yes. Be that last like oh, before I let it sink into the depths of Despair. I think one of the worst parts of it was when we were actually driving the boat to the ship. And I have my feet, like, you know, on both sides of the boat trying to keep a balance. Yeah. And Thomas is playing Pokemon Go, trying to catch <laughs> Charizard over here. And then, oh, wait, there's a... He's not paying any attention no. whatsoever. He's like, oops, going the wrong way. And then he would hard steer to one and side. And I'd be, you know, like, fighting Gs. We're doing... 25 knots. I don't know. No. <laughs> we, were going, we were going kind of slow. But still. We were going kind of slow. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, you know, eyes on the, the water. <laughs> Buddy. Come on, Tom. All right, yeah. But once we got to the side of the wild card, too, um, they hooked up some some ropes, or I should say a rope, and then like a, rope. a piece of floss as a safety lanyard in case the main rope went astray. and they hung it up the mast and back down to a capstan. And they hoisted the motorcycle yep. up to bring it onto the deck of the boat. the scariest thing in the universe because we are watching the motorcycle hang over the ocean yeah. by what looks like a thread. There wasn't like four points of contact to keep it straight and like everybody was like, yeah, okay. You know, you see people yeah. on like construction sites and like, bravo, we're good, bravo. No. But this was very important to me and there wasn't yeah. like a money back guarantee going nope. on, you know? But it got up and we had to get it over the handrails. Once I had my hand on it again, I felt a little bit more confident, even though if something were to have failed, my arm would have just been ripped out of the socket and drug along to the bottom of the ocean <laughs> along with my motorcycle. We got it on board. Yes. And we high fived yes. and every the crowd cheered. <laughs> it was amazing. And Thomas said, why would you doubt me? And I said, mm. many, many reasons. <laughs> And that was the uh, the beginning of our five day voyage. Now this boat trip, ours was the only motorcycle on it. Yeah. There was one guy with a bicycle Paul. who was bicycling around. Yeah, Paul. A German name. Very Paul. awesome. And then the rest were a bunch <laughs> of British people all trying to uh, to mingle. Yes. Trying to. Uh, it was a party Banter. cruise. It was. We were on like the love boat. <laughs> yes. And like Marissa and I were like the uncool aunt and uncle. Uh -huh. You know, we were like 35, <laughs> but we might as well have been 110. You know, uh -huh. in these kids' exactly. eyes. Thankfully, we had the one room oh, 
goodness. But one cabin on the entire yeah. boat. Someone had canceled and we were able to get it. Thank you, whoever you are out there. Yes. I don't know who you are, your name. You'll probably never see this, but <laughs> you're, you're a saint. <laughs> On the very first evening, the cook made us some wonderful lasagna. Yes. And there were three girls who were vegetarians and they had salads. And at first I looked at their like, meals and was uh, like, oh, oh that's so, so sad. Good. But once the boat started going and the waves started going like this. Everyone who was eating this greasy oh, bowl of lasagna, we all just layers. looked at each other in a moment and we were like, wow, all of us are about to throw up. <laughs> and then we all went to our separate puking just... decks. <laughs> and the vegetarians are like, losers. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So this sailboat trip was not just going to go straight from Panama to Colombia. It was going to go past these beautiful islands. They're actually an autonomous region. Uh, owned by indigenous people, and they're gorgeous. They're called the San Blas Islands. Many of the islands are uninhabited. Yeah, there's like 365 of them. So technically, you could you could hang out on one island every day of the year. Yeah. You can probably paddle in a canoe from one to the other. Probably. You know, some of them were about as big as two palm trees wide. Yeah. But it's an island. It, it came out the, out the water there. Even though I was seasick every time we were on the go, yeah. when we stopped at the islands, it was so beautiful. It was crazy beautiful. That water was the clearest blue water. There were like reefs and stuff. I'm ultra scared of the water. <laughs> like me and Avatar would not. I would. <laughs> I wouldn't do well. The way of the water is not is not the way. I'm more <laughs> Mandalorian. But I was in, overall enjoying my time. <laughs> And on one of these islands, we were actually allowed to camp there yeah. overnight. And no one else on the boat had a tent because they were all backpackers. Yeah. So we were able to set up our tent on one of these little small islands. Yeah. And everybody else was quite jealous. And so they, they were they were like, you know, survivor. And they're like, we're going to build a hut and it's going to be awesome. Out of palm fronds. Palm fronds. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, dude, no. back to the boat. You're <laughs> voted off the island, dude. This is not... You're cooking nuts if you think you're sleeping here. Oh. <laughs> How is it? Nice. At least it says horrible. It's not the best ever. It looks tiny. Like, there's not much in there. It's just like tiny. They did tell us 
Just be careful not to put your tent underneath a coconut tree. But the entire island was coconut trees. There was trees. a canopy of coconut trees. Yeah, they didn't want the coconuts to fall on the tent. And we did hear coconuts fall all yeah. throughout the, light, the night, like boom, boom. Yeah. But uh, thankfully, it did not fall on our tent. <laughs> yeah, and we had a nice little guard dog that, that yeah. protected us, it was nice belonged to one of the people who lived on the island, the indigenous people. There was there was heavy drinking going on. Yes, there was. And some of these uh, Brits on Gap Year had, had taken it a little a little too far. Yes, they did. And they got like googly eyes. Like I've never <laughs> seen it like, you know, Charlie Brown peanuts, like when someone gets kicked in the head and like stars happen and it goes woo, woo, woo. It was interesting. <laughs> We were concerned about the motorcycle and the salt water splashing up on it all the time. But the captain, Debbie, yeah. she told us that people had put motorcycles on the boat before and wrapped it in like saran wrap and when they took it off it was still just all covered in salt. So yeah. there was no avoiding it. But that's what comes with the territory, and yeah. the motorcycles in the ocean don't really mix. So after five days of some pretty amazing experiences, you know, some amazing swimming, some very drunken British people, <laughs> amazing sunsets though that, Aww. you know, I'll never forget, and sunrises. We saw dolphins. We did see dolphins. Yes. Oh my goodness. sailed up and we saw, you know, I mean, it felt like we've been on the ocean for five years. I was like, land! Yes, and land ho! Cartagena in the distance that was appearing. And the sun was rising and the mist was clearing and we could see these skyscrapers yes. of what Cartagena was, not what I expected at all. This was the gateway to South America, a whole new continent for us, a vast continent of all new adventures and we were so, so excited. Indeed, to get off of that boat. <laughs> yes. Like we could have been at like Hades, you know, we've been like, yep. I'm getting off, pay yep. the piper, give me my two get quarters, now. pay sticks, <laughs> tolls due, we're out of here. No, we couldn't be more excited for this, this new wide land. I mean, we had ridden through this funnel that was you know, Mexico into Central America, down into Panama, and now it was this explosion of landmass that was just begging to be explored. And so that will be the next episode as the beginning of our South America season. So stay tuned, and I hope you liked this one. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding, ding. And we'll be seeing you next time. Peace, everybody. Bye. Stay safe.